In this video, we will look at the habitat ecology and physiology of the Nemartia worm. For the most part, Nemartia share their habitats with a wide range of other species, like the carnivore sea star and some species of sea urchin. Although they are typically considered marine benthic animals, Nemartians may be also found buried in mud, sand, and other sediments, among rocks or associated with algae and other plant masses. Freshwater Nemartians are found in similar habitats, in streams and pools, while terrestrial species most often live along shorelines and in moist soil. Most of the Nemartia worms are aquatic and reproduce sexually, but there are also a few freshwater species that are hermaphroditic. Usually eggs and sperms are released separately and fertilization takes place externally. On the other hand, river worms are the simplest animal to possess a circulatory system and a gut with a separate mouth and anus. The body is usually long and slender and is often extended greatly during movement. Most species are less than 20 centimeters long, but the giant species Linus longissimus may reach a length of 30 meters. They have a very thickly muscled body walls. The thickness of the epidermis varies from species to species. Moreover, organization of the muscle wall is also variable, but it is typically made up of longitudinal and circular muscle divided into two or three layers. They also possess a closed circulatory system, meaning that they don't have a heart. Blood is pumped throughout their bodies through muscle contraction. Nemertians have a central nervous system consisting of a complex cerebral ganglion with four connected lobes, giving rise to a pair of longitudinal gangliated nerve cords from the ventral lobes. The nerve cords connect to each other at points throughout the worm's body and give rise to peripheral sensory and motor nerves. Most Nemertians are carnivores, but there are a few scavenger species, such as the case of the Antarctic one, which along with the sea stars uses its toxin to degrade and digest nutrients from carcass at the bottom of the ocean floor. An exact representation of what is happening to the silkworm carcass in this video. They hunt by using an elongated long sticky white glue called the proboscis. The proboscis could be sheeted or unsheeted. The kind of worm we are looking at right now has a sheeted proboscis, which usually rely on a series of spines that are located throughout the main body in order to mobilize prey with poison. On the other hand, if the worm has an unsheeted proboscis, such as the case of this worm on this clip, they will mostly use it to grab and choke prey with it since they don't have a poison spines on it. Finally, since most Nemertians are free living, there are some species that play a parasitic role. For example, parasitism has caused population declines up to 55% of egg mortality of Dungeonese crabs in California, affecting considerably the sustainable harvest of this particular crab species.